Do you want to learn how to melt bosses incredibly fast and clear maps solo or in groups without dying? In this video, you're going to learn how to make a very tanky pyro that can debuff and kill all enemies and bosses very easily. As you're probably aware, most classes in Outriders can seem a little bit squishy at times. I'm going to show you a build that is going to allow you to clear CT-15s easily, carry people who need help, destroy almost any enemy or boss incredibly easily. This build can also be adapted, so if you decide you want to kill a little faster, or if you favour survivability, then you'll be able to do that as well. Firstly, welcome to Jake's Gaming, hope you're doing well. The build itself was inspired from Juice Wiggly, a member in my Discord, and also an active member of the Outriders community. If you like what you see, please smash that like button and subscribe for more content. I'll be incredibly active on content creation when World Slayer drops, so you'll definitely want to check back as I'll have a lot of content that you'll likely find useful. Now I'm going to cover everything you need to know about this build and how to put it together. It is pretty simple if you know the best methods when trying to get the armour you want from vendors. It's just the re-rolling that might take you a fair bit of time. I'll touch on a few tricks you may or may not know a little later in the video. So first, let's go over the build rotation and everything that you need to know. We are focusing on max health power for this build, but you can alter it if you want to accommodate anomaly power. I would advise giving this careful thought, because even though you'll deal more damage, is it worth giving up survivability? Especially if you're new to playing a Pyromancer. This is the Max Health Pyro Mod Bomber. With max gear, this build has roughly 48k health power. It leverages Thermal Bomb and Ash Blast for crowd control and debuff. Almost all of its damage comes from weapon mods. While this build doesn't use a legendary set, it is still fairly gear intensive as max health, status power and cooldown on all pieces is very important. Max cooldown for Ash Blasts and Thermal Bombs is key. Status power maxed for Ash status, holding maximum duration and Ash Blast damage bonuses as well. Anomaly power could be used, but as said, is it worth losing survivability? I don't personally think it is, so in conclusion, it's best to stack HP and be a tank. Reload boost is key to this build, as every time Volcanic Rounds ends, Reload boost will give you a 50% increase in anomaly damage, which makes Claymore Torrent, Shadow Comet and Money Winds deal insane damage. The cooldown of Volcanic Rounds lasts about the same amount of time as the reload boost buff, so there is no downtime of the huge damage you can deal. Running winds will deal upwards of 7 million plus after you've thermal bombed, ash blasted and reload boosted from weapon swap. In effect, broodmothers, captains, etc. typically die in 1-2 to two seconds which is absolutely crazy. Normal mobs all melt from ash and burn status but also from the death sentence debuff. General execution for mobs would be to Ash Blast off cooldown, use volcanic rounds to shoot 1-2 to two times with Funeral Pyre, and apply burn which drops Shadow Comets and Claymore Torrents. Most enemies tend to die to this. Use Thermal Bomb liberally to debuff anything bigger such as an elite or a boss. Weapon switch to many wins when near big groups of enemies, or to finish off elites or bosses when off cooldown. For elites and bosses, the full debuff and nuke rotation is Volcanic Rounds, which will shoot Burn and the Shadow Comet and Claymore Torrent mods, two Thermal Bombs, Ash Blast, and then use the Funeral Pyre to shoot a few more shots, Weapon Swap to Money Wins to nuke the enemy, and use the Funeral Pyre again to clean up if this doesn't kill the boss. Typically, nothing will survive this onslaught. Your weapons are extremely important as these have been tested thoroughly and proven to be amongst the best. The Funeral Pyre with Shadow Comet and Claymore Torrent is what you'll want. This shotgun is fantastic as it sprays bullets so that each one that touches an enemy will rain down deadly damage. The Anamoy will be incredible for you too because it's rolled with many wins that does a base damage of 617k at level 50 and then all you have to do is slap on Radiation Splash for an increase in damage of 368k damage. More or less you'll do roughly about 1 million damage base 
and this is amplified by your anomaly power. For your pistols, you'll want to use Bolt and Thunder, which has Strings of Gorse attached to it. Slap on Ultimate Damage Link, and you'll link up to three enemies, and they'll take 40% of weapon damage and 20% of anomaly damage. This will be clutch for clearing elites and bosses faster, as they often have enemies surrounding them as well. As for your armor, these are all epics. You'll want to get them as green items with the correct attributes, then abuse Zahidi until you get all the rolls that you need on them. With my gear, I've put Captain Hunter and Bullet Kindling on my helmet. I've put Ash Increase Range and Ash and Boost on my chest piece. I've put Reload Boost and Death Sentence on my legs. I've put Fire Frenzy and Double Fun on gloves. And I've put Branded and Damage Absorber on my boots. If you're missing mods, I have some bonus tips to help you get those easily. Just to recap, you don't have to have everything identical to what's on the build sheet. The most important part is making sure that you have all the mods on the gear itself. The rest will follow. When obtaining the gear that you need, there are a few things that you might want to know. Firstly, if you're new to the game and you lack any particular legendary weapons or armor sets, you can learn more about how to obtain them through this video. The Tiago method is definitely the best and fastest method to get everything that you want. Secondly, you can shop for these armor pieces on multiple characters, but you'll really want to focus on vendors that sell green pieces of gear. If you're below level 20, the armor will roll with two attributes on it, and once you level it above level 20, you'll get the option to add an extra attribute. Finding the right attributes takes a while when you're searching for max health power, cooldown and status. So if you can reduce that down to two attributes you're looking for, then you'll be able to find it much faster, as matching two is faster than matching three, due to vendors selling randomly rolled gear. You'll then want to take this to Zahidi and use the roll technique where you upgrade and if you don't like it, dashboard the game and restart until you get the rolls that you want. This also applies to the mods that you need for the gear, so it's definitely worthwhile doing as you'll be wasting a lot of time if you don't follow this method. If you have questions surrounding anything, please do let me know or join our Discord and seek help from the community we have there. With World Slayer just around the corner, getting involved with an active community will better your experience and put you in touch with people to play with and much more. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it has helped you and I'm here to answer any questions you may have, so please reach out to me. Take care and I'll catch you on the next one.